Hello, I'm Jutta Stahlhacke. I'm a textile designer and an artist. And I studied in Birmingham and then run my own studio for about 15 years here in Birmingham. Um, before I did something totally different for a while and I actually came back to textiles about five years ago. Uh, and what it was important for me at that point was that I work in and with communities and that I that my practice is sustainable. So, among a lot of other things, I run a textile group, a weekly textile group session, two sessions at the old print works in Bosulis, which is open uh, for people to attend. We do a virtually Thursday evening session as well, and it's for anybody who wants to learn some, something about textiles, who wants to develop their own projects, who wants to be together with people. Uh, if you're interested, you're very welcome. Um, this specific project is making pieced pin cushions. Here's one we did. Here is the one I use all the time for my own work. Uh, we decided to do that because it's simple. It is very simple. Uh, you don't need any knowledge beforehand or any special tools. Um, it's transportable so you can take it anywhere you want it. And what was important for me is that it was an introduction to patchwork. Um, once you know how to make one of those and got the technique, you can expand it, make it larger, make bigger quilts, cushions, wall hangings, whatever you like. If the bug gets you, um, you may not be able to throw any fabric away, or at least think about throwing it away. Uh, little pieces, little mementos of people or of occasions where a certain piece of fabric was present, or and I've al always made a quilt for any of the new babies in our my family. So. Um, if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, Arts in the Yards made a video um, which is available uh, as was an interview and is available on the same YouTube channel as this one. And yeah, let's get making pin cushions and I hope you have fun. Okay, let's start and look at what you got in your little pack. You should have received something like this. And when you pull it out, there's some fabric. Different fabrics, for about four different fabrics or five, five different fabrics for you to choose from. Underneath the fabrics is that are the templates which you have to cut out. I come back to that in a bit. Uh, leaflet. Then you have a little bag with, or a bigger bag with stuffing and a smaller little envelope which has some needles inside and thread for you to sew with the button. And this little mysterious bit, which is masking tape. I come back to that later. Uh, one thing to say is all the fabric is recycled or is left over from other projects. Um, the wadding, the stuffing comes from an old cushion. It's washed. Everything is washed, so it is hygienic and no worries. So we, uh, you also have some paper clips which you might need later. Um, so let's start with the templates. There are two different designs. One is a pyramid, which are those four, and one is a square. 
so choose which one you want to do. Either one will be fine. Or you can do both if you fancy that. Um, and then you can start cutting out your template. It doesn't have to be engineering precision. And that's really all you need to do. So there you have the template. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to mark the fabric. What you need to do is put the fabric, uh, the template on the fabric. And I'm marking everything with a biro and or a pencil, which works quite well. Um, if you mark with a biro and a pencil, you want to do that on the reverse, like here, of your fabric, so you don't see it at the right side. So we're just marking the fabric like that. There you go. And then the other important thing is to leave a about one centimeter a seam allowance. And I have prepared another piece, which I'm getting out now. Slightly different color, but that doesn't matter. Which I've cut out one centimeter seam allowance. And you want to have the cards inside of your piece. And there are two ways of doing that. You can either use your paper clips to hold the fabric back. Done that there. Another sample I've done, and I hope you can see that. I have started sewing the edges, the corners, and I'm going to do the same with the last, co to co the last corner here. I find the easiest way to get them together is to flip the, push both sides together, then fold it down and you can see I have already secured these and this is my last one which I am stitching Ugh. you can see just stitch a little bit backwards and forwards the purpose of the stitching is to hold the fabric in position on top of the cards because the card is your indicator how big it is. This is what the proper quilters do. I have not been brought up as a quilter, so I'm doing it slightly different. And that's where the masking tape comes in because I'm lazy, but it also works just as well. So masking tape. You just take off a couple of strips. One, two, three, four. I usually need six. What you then do, I find that much faster than the sewing. And just as easy to remove. Stick on the masking tape. Stick on the masking tape and again the corners. I don't need very much for the corners, I think. Again, I hope you can see that. Push them in, lay the corner flat, stick a bit of tape on, push the uh, edges or corners together. The top bit is a little cone, you fold flat stick a bit of tape on. Uh, there you have a card, uh, the fabric around the templates. I've done, I've shown you some other bits I have already done. There's one. It's a bit more fiddly with the uh, smaller cards. Actually, these are my chosen colors for the design. I can now begin to sew the first pieces of my square pin cushion together. Okay, at this point you probably have 
if he chooses square design, I will show bits for the pyramid, the important bits for the pyramid design as well. You probably have something like that or everything prepared. And what I'm showing you now is sewing two of the cards together. What you do is you just put them right sides facing on top of each other. And start sewing very really above the above the cards. You may need to wiggle a bit, you may scorch the card in there, but that's okay. And you make nice neat stitches catching both fabrics all the way along. Along the line. Sometimes you have to wiggle a little bit. I have been known to stitch through the cards, but it looks that's a little bit like a stamp then. Maybe while I'm doing that I can tell you about when the cards come out of the of your pin cushion. They can come out when each of the sides is attached to another piece of fabric with a card in. That's the point where you can take them out. And there is your two sewn together. I think the next one you could just add on and continue sewing. At this point you would have to cut it. And put your last piece on. Okay, let's put that aside. I now have one that has all three to put on, waiting for the fourth one to go in. And I think it's quite nice how neatly they fold together. Then I have prepared one earlier where I actually started. And when you have all four, you of course put the base and the four individual squares together. And I have already done that. Don't sew it all the way across. You need to have a little gap, about five centimeters, which is one of the squares, to turn it inside out and put the stuffing in, which I have done. And then with this one, I also wanted to show you how to take the cards out. I've removed all the masking tape there and you need a little bit of wiggling and ah, look, I have actually sewn through the card there. You get sometimes little stamp-like um, marks on them, but that's fine. And let me show you on this one as well. Uh, make sure you have a half a decent seam allowance because in some fabrics it might unravel very readily and you don't want to have that and kind of having to start all over again. And there we go. And another one. It will take off some of the top layer of your card but that doesn't matter. And you can, of course you can reuse the card, use it for other projects use it as a um, template to trace around. All of that will work. There we go. Card comes out. And now there is a turning. We can a bit fiddly, but works well. There we go. I usually use, I don't know, a knitting needle or like here, the pencil to push the corners out. You can do that on the inside because you won't see it. There we go, come on. And this one. And this one. I will show you later how to sew this together. But now we can use it stuffing. Uh, I've given you enough fabric for two projects I guess and the stuffing is also enough for two projects. You 
just make it go in. Stuff it in. Use your fingers and your pencil to get it in place. The right amount of stuffing is when it's firm but not solid and you know how you like your make sure you kind of get it into the corners because it's not very nice to have one fat lump somewhere okay and this will be pushed out when all of that is sewn together next step we need to sew the corner together. No, the last opening closed. Usually start from the inside, put this down. And what you want to do is invisible stitching, really, as much as you can. And again, as close to the to the edge of the fabric as you can. There are, many of you will be quite experienced sewers anyway, so you know what to do. And also there are always, I don't know, 10 different ways of doing something. Um, use the one that suits you. So all sewn together now, you could see slight different in stitches, but it doesn't matter. One more stitch and then I can take it off, cut it off. And the last thing we have to do is a the button. I start at the middle. And it's always interesting where it comes out which is never in the middle of the... Uh, yep, that should do. A couple of stitches. to stay in there. Ah, that's not good for you, is it? And there you are. For the pyramid, you want to do a couple of things slightly different. Again, you mark your fabric on the back. Of course, it hasn't marked at all. <laughs> There we go. You then cut it out with a centimeter seam allowance. And then here's uh, one I have prepared earlier where I begun to put to mask them. masking tape on to hold the card inside the fabric. Okay, so you will do this. Uh, getting the corners is a little bit more fiddly than on the square pieces. You fold them down and then fold them under 
and stick them down. Again here, fold them down and stick them under. I'm sorry this is very difficult to show. Again I have prepared bits and pieces and begun to stick the pyramid together. So what you do is all your stuck down pieces with the cards inside, you sew together, sew the triangles to the base square. You then end up with something like that and you want to fit them together like this. But because of the card inside it's a little bit difficult. So this is what I found easiest to do. You may find other ways. Because the square has all four because the square has all four sides attached to some other piece of fabric. I took that one out. Then I sewed two and then a third one together one, two, and a third one, and I took the middle one out. And then I had to push a little bit and the cards bend just a little bit to sew the remaining two together. This one is not yet sewn together. I would leave a five millimeter, a uh, five centimeter gap for the turning do the last one and then turn it inside out and stuff it like I did with a square sample. Here's a pyramid I did before which is heavily used as my pin cushion for most of the work I'm doing. I wanted to show you one of the pieces I'm working on which uses the same technique and I'm just so collecting any red fabrics I can get and putting them together quite randomly actually and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm just trying to, I'm doing this on a 10 centimeter grid which means I try to get as many variations on 10 centimeters as I could think of and you may be able to think more. I'm going to show you this sketch and these are kind of beginning of the variations you can use and because they all kind of fit in this 10 centimeter grid they will all fit together. You could go bigger, you could do 20 centimeters. Another project um, that you could do, let me just put this away, Hexagons kind of fit fit in the same way. Uh, you can see the hexagons here. You need a different template for that, but they're readily available. And here it is kind of put together in a, like an old country quilt. Um, you can make them then as big as possible. Anything from, I don't know, cushion, a wall hanging, a quilt. Uh, using fabrics that you would normally throw away or that you only can get hold small parts of it or that are left over from different projects. Um, actually, you probably, once you started doing that and you get hooked, you won't throw anything away. And that's good because fabric needs to be recycled. If you look online uh, and want to find out more about this pieced patchwork making, uh, they sometimes called pieced or paper pieced quilts or foundation piece patchwork and there are hundreds of patterns and instructions and whatever available so have a look and enjoy. Thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you now have a nice pin cushion that you like and can use. Um, if you have any questions there is a online session from Arts in the Arts on this, is it the 8th? Yeah, 8th of July. Please ask me then and if you can't attend that session, contact me. My contact details are in the pack. 
Um, also, we would love to see your pin cushions. So if you can take a photo and send them to me or send them to Arts in the Yards, that would be brilliant. And I also wish I can make a proper workshop session with some of you soon. That would be brilliant and not this online stuff. And um, keep making patchwork, textiles, arts, uh, and enjoy that. That's it. Goodbye.